I think Casemiro, deadly serious, should know himself tonight, as an experienced player, that he should only have another three games left at the top level, the next two league games and a cup final, and then he should be thinking, I need to go to the MLS or Saudi. I'm deadly serious, his agents or the people around him, they always have a team of people around them, they need to tell him, this has to stop, because we are watching one of the greats of the modern time, playing in one of the best midfields we've seen who dominated Europe, him holding, a Cruz to one side, Modric to the other, was one of the best midfields, could easily go up against the Barcelona midfield that we all loved, Busquets, Xavi, Iniesta, so he's been an absolute great. I am nowhere near on a level of what that man has achieved, Champions League, playing for Brazil, playing for Brazil, playing for Real Madrid, but I always remember something when I retired myself, and there was a saying I always remember, as a footballer, leave the football before the football leaves you, the football's left him. At this top level, he needs to call it a day, at this level of football and move. Might be easier said than done though, because he still has two years left on a really hefty contract at Old Trafford. No Dave, I'm saying. So, pay him off. He'd have earned the right few quid, good luck to him. He's not going to go anywhere without being paid off. They pay him off, they do some sort of deal, but the level of that player, he should not be putting himself through this. He is too good of a player to be putting in a performance like that and being laughed at by Crystal Palace. He's not playing Man City, he's not playing Real Madrid, all due respect to Crystal Palace. A man of that level should not be going through what he's going through when he needs to call it a day. We know behind the scenes, Ashley, that there is a lot going on at Manchester United, there is a huge turnover of personnel, some of those changes have been made, some are going to come into effect in the summer, and maybe even beyond that, in terms of Dan Ashworth coming from Newcastle United, uh, Jason Wilcox already there. When they are looking at this period for Manchester United, I'm wondering what it is that takes them forward, how do you think they're going to be reflecting on this period in Manchester United's season under Eric Ten Hag? I feel like we're looking and thinking the disappointment in it. You're not seeing too many green on the screen with wins, you're seeing plenty of draws and two losses there, and a lot of goals conceded as well. So many goals conceded and that's where you need to start, is stop conceding goals. I think they're going to come in and be pretty much rubbing their hands together to know that they can't do a worse job than what's been going on. I think they're going to have so much know-how and see the squad and see what they've been looking at in the last few months to see what they need to come in and change. It's been for years now that things need to change from the top. Hopefully now that the new owners are coming in, things are going to start changing. But like I said, when you're a player in that dressing room, you've got to look at yourself and not have everything be put on the manager because you're the ones that go out there and play. I've been talking about the missing out on Europe for the second time since Sir Alex Ferguson left the club. As if it's a terrible thing if they finish 8th and they miss out. Regardless of who the coach is, could it actually be a blessing, Jamie? I think it would be better for them if they miss out because they won't have as many games, they can cut the squad, they need to get people off the wager. Casemiro and Varane have got to go, and then you go with a smaller squad and you almost try and build something. It gives you more coaching time, whoever the coach is, you don't get bogged down with that Thursday, Sunday and then you say, okay, this season we're going for Europa League or try and push for the Champions League. People might laugh at that, but Manchester United have got to be pushing for the Champions League every year. They'll spend again in the summer, maybe it's not as much as they normally do because of a PSR. But I said before about Manchester United fans, you need to believe something so it's not just about results, it's the performance. Another big thing for managers in this day and age with the digital world that we're living in is their interviews. Now, before the game, the managers spoke about things improving in 2024. They're not, they're not, they're not. So you look at that run of results, they're terrific. Do you see any scenario then when he stays? I do see a scenario where he stays because I actually think there's that much change behind the scenes now with Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilkicks, almost trying to fix the structure. What new managers are going to want to come in to coach that team and also if they can't actually change too much in terms of money-wise in the summer? But listen, Manchester United could get almost any manager they want because they're one of the biggest and best football clubs in the world. But I said before they're one of the worst coach teams in the league who I watch, and I watch a lot of these teams, I watch a lot of football analyzer for this show, and they are as bad as anything. And if he is to stay, I think it would be because they don't actually want to bring a new manager in with the situation that the club is right now because if he was to lose his job, I don't think he could have any complaints.